Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at a pretty huge induction stop. This is a uh, yeah one and a half size normal unit. Um, so yeah, let's uh, tear, tear it apart, see what uh, Power Electronics it has. It is a five zone induction stop uh, along with a uh, large uh, oven, but it doesn't really matter to me. It's an Italian SMIEG, and if we take a look at the sticker here we can see it's the model name cs19 and it's rated for 9.6 kilowatts of induction power so the 12.6 kilowatt uh, must include the rating for the oven let's take a look at the back there is a test sticker um, for the earth or grounding scheme seems to uh, go quite well and then there's a connection scheme here it can be connected either two or three phased and here we have the cable going in. Starting down here at the uh, input connection, we can see this was connected for three phase plus uh, neutral. The whole thing uh, yeah, goes off in different wire bunches here. We have uh, a oven uh, fan. Then there is some temperature uh, switches sitting along. Different uh, I think lights and such for the... As you can see this is pretty burnt. There's too little heat insulation around the places where you actually have plastic. Here at the heating elements uh, you actually do not use plastic for the same reason and it's all silicone wire or you have this um, fiberglass reinforced uh, heat resistant wires. And this is the interesting bunch which goes to the induction stuff and not all these yeah open frame motors you see in all kinds of kitchen appliances. But this bunch actually goes over and connect up to the induction stoves, which are in two sections. And uh, the rest of the stuff goes over here too. Selected for the oven, timer, and the digital controls up to the Induction stuff, we can see this is actually 20 milliamp 5 volt DC encoders, so they are worth keeping. The front clock is actually controlled by a Atmega 16. This induction stuff is serious business. Look at this, 10 kilowatt. We mostly have the high power, two plates here, medium power, two small power. And it has this... Um, I think it reminds me of some silver mega screens or something like that. Maybe someone knows what it is. It's not like it's paper, it's some kind of a fiber. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just uh, check out the scale of this unit. Banana for scale. We need a good beer to uh, go along with this. So, cheers. The control panel. It goes off down into the unit here with a set of blue wires and a set of white wires, which corresponds to what we will see at the back. At the back of the unit, we can see we have the input power over here. It is just marked 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and earth. And we can see we have the bundle of potentiometers or encoders for selecting the power setting of each plate. Just comes out from the left unit here and we have the bigger right unit. We can also see some power wires going between here, but other than that, this is two separate units. Everything is just mounted with these small plastic standoffs where you have a male and female part that then lock something in place. Had two each. The same goes for the little control board. Underneath each plate, we can see it has a temperature sensor in a silicone and ceramic package. And it has the tube primary wires going back to the inverter board. Uh, we can also see there is just one 3.3 microfarad 400 volt DC capacitor there. Most likely the resonant capacitor and seems like there is just one for each. But we will see once we get this whole metal shield removed what we have on the PCBs. So let's get all this away. The entire inside of this induction cooker is made up by all these boards. Now, this is both disappointing, but also a bit interesting. It is a three-phased FET, so that's uh, three times 400 volts or three times 230 volt AC if you reference to the neutral. The input board, power board over here, 
is uh, two sections. We have a section here going to that board. We have another section here going by these black wires to this board. And these two white wires go to this board. So these are each fed from one phase plus neutral 230 volt AC. Now the main board is uh, controlled by a Atmega32 controller. The same goes on for the control panel, also has a Atmega32. The encoders that sits at the front of the whole unit has a Atmega8 controller down here. And they are all connected with some wires, two wire communication, which goes back and forth between all the boards. Now it's it's a little funny that the what seems to be the bus communication is spread out like being out in the corner here, very long wires, and this bus cable is a flat cable that goes over here, but the other bus connectors here and here and here. And that one goes over here. So, yeah, it's hard to say if this is really a good layout for a bus wiring. Now, the individual boards here is three identical uh, power inverters. These are controlled, however, by a Freescale MC56F8322, uh, which is a clone of a DSP processor and a microcontroller. It can do uh, 60 MIPS at uh, 60 MHz, and it has all the peripherals that you need to drive a inverter. It has a 6-channel PVM module, it has 3 channels 12-bit ADCs, has 21 general purpose IOs, and it's actually specified to run in a FlexCAN bus. So I guess it's safe to assume that this two-wire bus that we can see here is the CAN bus that this microcontroller is specified to use. Since it is a clone of a DSP and microcontroller, it has both a program flash, program RAM, data flash, data RAM, and a boot uh, sector. So it has a lot of capabilities in that small package. The whole idea behind this build seems to be that this module we have here can be sold as a four-zone induction cooker and then you can add this module for an additional zone or maybe this module can even be sold as a two-zone or a single-zone board. As we can see, we only have one configured induction heater circuit here. That the DC bus capacitors are the only one in place in both sides. It starts out with a GBJ2510 bridge rectifier, which is a 1000 volt 25 amp uh, bridge rectifier. And the half bridge controlling the LC circuit for the coil and the resonant capacitors, which are 0.68 microfarads at 630 volt DC X2 capacitors. RXS XG IXGR 40 and 60. Now these are incredible fast IGBTs. They can do a whole switch on off cycle in a mere 160 nanoseconds. That's pretty nice. Now uh, they are rated for uh, 600 volt at 56 amps at uh, the 25 degrees diet temperature and can do up to 200 amp peak. And when you look at the 125 degree uh, die temperature, it's halved down to 26 amps. Now it's kind of funny that they mounted on, on this um, isolated pad here because these are actually ISO plus 247 packs, which are electrically isolated on the backside. Getting a single inverter board up here at, for a closer look. We can see that we have the high current tracks for the DC bus here in the middle. And they have actually left out the Cena diodes that they have placed. Seems to be a chain of three of these, which are pretty common to use some of the cheaper lower voltage Cena diodes going between the plus and minus of the DC bus. But these have been left out here. We can see we have a gate drive transformers. So this is a regular isolated gate drive transformer uh, setup. And the uh, gate drive transistors must come from down here. 
and it does not seem like we have a disk designated gate drive uh, IC. So the output of the Freescale CPU here is probably driven through that network of, yeah, well, that's maybe a pre-drive transistor there, and then we have the output stage here. Also has a current transformer for each section in the resonance circuit. And I actually got this uh, unit because it was defective. It would turn on and off sometimes and sometimes not, and it was actually pretty expensive to repair. And coming to look at it, I think I have found the, the fault here. Now if we take a look at these wires here, two of them have uh, actually melted through the isolation and could have short circuit up against some other parts or maybe just each other and that did that this did not work. So uh, I could uh, repurpose these uh, nice drivers as I still have all the coils all intact. So there is absolutely no need to uh, throw this out. So that will make for some great experiments later on. The um, main control panel which is uh, controlled by capacitively cobbled touch points and has uh, five seven segment LCDs or LEDs and it has the Atmega32 controller and uh, not much else on there except we can see it could actually connect some of these encoders directly which also seems to make my point about this being a single unit that if we look at the input power section of this we can see we have some components missing down here that could actually be built in potentiometers or some other kind of uh, control logic so you can actually have this two zone unit being driven all by itself. So all in all it seems to be a very modular system but unfortunately for me this is not a three phased 400 or 5 to 600 volt DC induction heater which I had really hoped for. So it's built as cheap as it can get uh, while still maxing out the limitations of a 3 times 400 volt AC service in Denmark, which is about 12 kilowatt. I hope you enjoyed this teardown, I hope you enjoyed the circuit analysis of these inverters, and I hope you learned what you can gain from checking out some old uh, induction stuffs if you came upon them. So, until next time, see ya!